Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank series. This is the video series where I give you free practice questions that are really challenging. And the purpose of these questions is so while you're practicing, you get comfortable answering third and second order challenging questions so that when you actually sit for USMLE or Comlex, your brain is fully prepared to tackle similar questions on the actual test. So let's get into today's practice question. A seven-year-old male with no past medical history presents to the emergency department complaining of fatigue, polydipsia, 10-pound weight loss over the past two weeks, polyuria, vomiting, hyperventilation, and abdominal pains. A fasting blood glucose level is measured and found to be 513 milligrams per deciliter. His heart rate is 112. He's diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 1 and started on the appropriate treatment. Which of the following possible mechanisms correctly describes the pathophysiology of this patient's symptoms? A. Decreased plasma osmolality. B. Decreased plasma free fatty acids. C. Anion gap metabolic alkalosis. D. Increased lipolysis. Or E. Decreased glycogenolysis. So pause the video if you want to think about this. But if you are ready, I'm now going to give you the answer. So pause now if you don't want me to spoil it. The correct answer in this question is choice D, increased lipolysis. And this question, if not already obvious just by reading the vignette, is talking about pathophysiology that's associated with insulin deficiency. So we can probably assume from the question stem that this patient with no past medical history is now, as the question tells you, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and is presumably in diabetic ketoacidosis, although that's not necessarily clear just from reading the question. But regardless of what's actually happening clinically, the question is asking you to understand and infer different pathophysiology that occurs in states of insulin deficiency. And this is really high yield for USMLE and Comlex. There are various different pathophysiologies that are occurring and test writers really love to go after these pathophysiologies because they involve all of the biochemical reactions that you need to know. So it's a really great opportunity for a test writer to connect something clinical like type 1 diabetes and what happens in states of insulin deficiency with the different biochemical pathways that you're supposed to understand in terms of how do these pathways respond to increase versus decrease insulin, increase versus decrease glucagon, etc. So what I want to do now is just discuss very briefly why choice D is correct, and then we'll talk about test-taking strategies and how you might work backwards if you didn't know that choice D was correct. So choice D says increased lipolysis, and what you should know is that in an insulin-deficient state, the body increases lipolysis. So it's, it's lysing those fats, hence the name lipolysis. Now when it does this, it's mobilizing them. So it increases levels of plasma-free fatty acids. And what that does is that actually increases the level of ketogenesis. And when you think about the name diabetic ketoacidosis, the keto part is because now there's increased levels of ketogenesis. So those ketones will be found in the blood and in the urine. And when there's excessive levels of ketones in the blood and the urine, you get different clinical symptoms like vomiting and abdominal pain. So that level, that increased level of ketones in the blood is directly responsible for some of the symptoms that you see clinically and in this vignette. Now the other thing that increased levels of ketones in the blood does is it causes an anion-gapped metabolic acidosis. And that anion-gapped metabolic acidosis gives rise not only to some of these clinical symptoms, but in this vignette in particular, it gives rise to something called Kussmaul res respirations. And that's that kind of hyperventilation state, that deep, heavy breathing that you'll see in patients with diabetic ketoacidosis. So it's really important to be able to kind of work down the pathway here in terms of what's happening biochemically, increased lipolysis, increased free fatty acids, therefore increased ketones, increased ketones in the blood equals vomiting, Increase, increased ketones in the blood equals anion gap metabolic acidosis, which equals hyperventilation. And so we're just connecting all these dots from the biochemical pathway that you learn in your preclinical years to what's happening in insulin deficient states. So bottom line here is that the only answer choice that correctly describes a pathophysiology in an insulin deficient state is increased lipolysis. But let's assume that you didn't know that. Now we're talking test taking strategy. Let's assume that you didn't know that choice D was the correct answer.
Would you be able to potentially work backwards and eliminate incorrect answer choices if you only knew a few pieces of inf information here? And so let's look at cho answer choices A and E because they're very much related. Answer choice A says decreased plasma osmolality and answer choice E says decreased glycogenolysis. And so what, what's actually happening in an insulin deficient state is that you get increased levels of glycogenolysis. So right off the bat, we can eliminate answer choice E because you're getting increased glycogenolysis. And in an insulin deficient state, when there's no insulin, the body is thinking, I need to increase the level of glycogenolysis. This is abnormal. We don't want this to happen because this is what's happening when insulin cannot be secreted by somebody's pancreas, as is the case in type 1 diabetes due to autoimmune destruction of those islet cells. But what we're, what we're seeing here is increased levels of glycogenolysis. So choice E would be incorrect. Um, and I'll talk about choice A in just a second here. When you increase the levels of glycogenolysis, that obviously is lysing glycogen. And what's the net effect of lysing the stored glycogen? That's putting more glucose in the blood. So you get hyperglycemia. And therefore, when there's increased levels of glucose in the blood, you get increased plasma osmolality. And so when you take a patient who has diabetic ketoacidosis or is just insulin deficient in general, even before they reach diabetic ketoacidosis, when you measure their blood glucose, you know, you prick their finger and measure their blood, you see very high levels of glucose. And that high level of glucose causes increased plasma osmolality. So choice A and choice E are both incorrect. And you potentially could have just figured this out on your own if you used the vignette to, to tell yourself, okay, so they have type 1 diabetes. I know that they must be insulin deficient or don't have as much insulin as a normal person. So what would happen with glycogenolysis? Would it be increased or would it be decreased? And simply knowing the answer to that question is, is easy for you to do if you've studied the biochemistry pathway. Because if you know about glycogenolysis, you should know how it responds to insulin. You should also know, is there increased or decreased insulin in type 1 diabetes? So we can eliminate answer choices A and E, whether we know about diabetes clinically or whether we know about glycogenolysis biochemically. Let's look at answer choice B, decreased plasma-free fatty acids. So what's actually happening in an insulin deficient state is that you get, like I said before, and where the correct answer was, you get increased lipolysis. And increased lipolysis causes increased plasma-free fatty acids, which as I already stated before when we talked about the correct answer, causes ketogenesis, which causes anion gap metabolic acidosis, which causes vomiting, hyperventilation, yada, yada, yada. So choice B is incorrect for the same reason that choice D is correct. And I've already said it, but let's just look at answer choice C here. Anion gap metabolic alkalosis. Well, it's not an alkalosis, it's an acidosis. And that anion gap metabolic acidosis comes from the excessive high levels of ketogenesis, which puts more ketones in the blood, which causes the acidosis. And remember, there's a clever mnemonic to remember the different causes of anion-gapped metabolic acidosis, you want to remember mud piles. And the D in mud piles, the D stands for DKA. So this is very high yield because it's a lot of different pathophysiology. You need to know the nitty gritty details, unfortunately. But if you're able to connect what's happening clinically to what you've already memorized and learned biochemically, it makes all of this quite a bit easier. So the high yield takeaway here, the summary, is that insulin deficiency is associated with one, increased glycogenolysis. Two, increased gluconeogenesis. Three, increased proteolysis. And four, increased lipolysis. Now we're increasing all of these things, which has a really devastating effect on the body. So what does that cause? Well, going down in order, one, two, three, and four, one, increased glycogenolysis causes increased plasma osmolality, which manifests as things like polyuria, polydipsia, uh, number two really causes the same thing. Number three, increased proteolysis causes decreased protein and weight loss. So you see that cachexia. You saw in the, the vignette here that I told you the patient had lost 10 pounds over the course of two weeks. And that's happening because of proteolysis. We are breaking down proteins. And then number four, increased levels of lipolysis. That was the correct answer in this question that causes increased free fatty acids in the plasma which therefore causes increased ketogenesis. 
which manifests as a couple things. One, vomiting. Two, anion gap metabolic acidosis that causes those Kussmaul respirations, etc. So all of this information is very much connected, but the bottom line here is know the pathophysiology of what happens with your different biochemistry reactions and then how that looks clinically when somebody is insulin deficient. So I hope that this was useful for you. Best of luck. Keep crushing it.